Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and it is Sunday night. Another Sunday night here inside John's Pass at Hubbard's Marina, and it's time for another live stream show. That's right. We are getting ready to get rolling here on our Sunday night live stream show. Hopefully you guys have some great questions for us and uh, we're ready to answer them. So hopefully everybody's ready for a great show. Appreciate y'all tuning in and hanging out with us. Remember, if you're watching the live, you have an opportunity to win over $700 in free fishing trips. All you have to do is comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So go to facebook.com, type in Hubbard's Marina, and then once you get to the Hubbard's Marina page, find that live video and comment one time. That enters you to win those over $700 in free fishing trips we're giving away tonight. You can watch on Instagram, you can watch on YouTube, you can watch on another Facebook page, wherever you want to, but you have to comment one time on Hubbard's Marina's Facebook stream in order to be eligible to win. Then if you're picked as the lucky winner, you got to text that phone number down there in the corner uh, within about five minutes to claim your free trip giveaway. So make sure you comment one time and then watch the entire show. And if you're picked, react quickly and text us at that phone number there. That way you can claim that free trip. So First things first, as always, we want to get into what we've been catching, what we've been seeing, and we always start inshore and work our way near shore and offshore. So we'll show you first what we're seeing inshore, what's been going on lately. So let's get started inshore and show you guys that recent inshore catch. Here's a nice big old black drum. The black drum bite has definitely been going well around the Tampa Bay area, around our local bridges, passes, jetties, dock lines. We've been seeing those black drum on shrimp, crabs, a variety of dead cut bait on the bottom. Also redfish, the redfish bite has been good lately. Uh, and we've been seeing quite a few redfish, especially on the bottom around those bridge lights, dock lights, uh, some good redfish action up in the uh, bay around those uh, mangrove shorelines at higher tide, oyster bars. Uh, we've been seeing some snook at the edges of those points uh, hanging out near the grass flats and areas that are collecting and congregating that live bait. We've been seeing a lot of snook in the passes. Uh, at least prior to Elsa, we had a really good, and even through Elsa, we had a really good snook bite in the past. Some good trout in the morning. Been seeing some trout around the flats. They're hanging on those deeper edges of the flats lately. As the water warms up, the trout are definitely moving deeper and finding those pockets, those cuts, and kind of hanging out in that deeper, cooler water for sure. All right, so that's about it inshore. Let's work our way near shore and offshore and show you guys what we've been seeing on our trips. So, of course, red snapper season is still in full swing until end of day, August 2nd. Thank you, Dennis Mills, for those 400 stars. You're the man. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, but as I was saying, red snapper season in full swing, so we're seeing a lot of those big red snapper. Today's 12-hour extreme trip got into the blackfin tuna. Captain Garrett and Captain Rich were both out there today, and they got some nice blackfin tuna, some fat red grouper, plentiful big red snapper. Demetrius Toller, thank you for those stars, buddy. 530, you're the man. Here's Eric Deskins with a big old kingfish from our 39-hour fishing trip. Our good friend Estelle Wolfman, one of our Hubbard's Marina supporters, showing off a monster porgy. Monster porgy. Is it? Yeah, right? A big porgy. And uh, those porgies, they fight hard, too. Those big jolt heads, they are quite the fighter. Uh, Estelle said she thought she had a gag grouper hooked uh, and turned out to be a porgy. So they fight really, really well. Tim Corwin, appreciate those stars, buddy. There's another big porgy, some nice gag grouper recently on our 39-hour fishing trips. We've seen a few scamp grouper mixed in with those gags and fat red snapper. 
been seeing a great grade of red snapper lately. Haven't seen huge overwhelming boat limits of red snapper, but overall very good size. Nice gag grouper from Eric Deskins. Christina Romano, appreciate those stars. Monster, monster mangrove snapper. We've been seeing quite a few nice mangrove snapper lately on our 39-hour fishing trip. A few of them on the 10-hour all day. Uh, The 12-hour night snapper, the last one was really tough, mostly due to weather. Um, But we do really well on those 12-hour night snappers when the weather cooperates typically, especially early this year. We had a really good uh, run of those 12-hour night snappers. Thanks, Dan. Dana Bear, appreciate those stars. <laughs> and a nice uh, red grouper from our five hour half day, 10 hour all day has been seeing those red grouper, definitely bigger red grouper out in deeper water. Flying Hub 2 has been doing really well on fat red grouper. The uh, 39 hour trip's been seeing some good ones. The Hub has been seeing a, get, a couple good ones. There's a 32-inch red grouper from our friend Jerry on his private charter recently. Larry Bledsoe, appreciate those stars. Christina, I appreciate you guys. Christine, Christine, sorry, Christine. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Barnes, appreciate those stars, y'all. The Hub's been doing well. Here's a nice big old rusty belly gag grouper caught by John Martin on a recent 39-hour trip, another monster gag. Definitely been seeing a good push of those big gags on a variety of those deep water trips. Got to go deep this time of year, 12-hour extreme, 39-hour, 44-hour. Long-range private charters is where the big gags are hiding for sure. We've been seeing a lot of these gags on cut bait, uh, whether it's a butterfly, porgy, or... uh, squirrel fish or white grunt uh also the squid the whole squid the whole octopus the bonita strips all great options for these monster gag groupers we've been seeing a lot of them come up on the bigger live baits that we catch while we're offshore fishing too Uh, some definite good size gags man these gag grouper photos just keep going and going there is a kingfish we switched it up finally Dana and Rich Fletcher, appreciate those 800 stars. You guys rock. Thank you very much. Another nice kingfish, and look at that mutton. Captain Joe and Captain Rich on the Flying Hub 2 here. Nice rusty belly gag and a beautiful mutton snapper. We don't get a ton of muttons in our area, but typically when we do, they are larger mutton snapper. And then this random bull mahi-mahi, that was a nice surprise. There's a fresh photo of that mutton when it first came up out of the water nice surprise to say the least fat red snappers overall the dead cut bait's been working really well for us mostly because it's been tricky to get the big uh the plentiful live bait for our longer range trips we'll talk about that a little bit more here shortly but as you can see a lot of grouper few scamp, few red grouper, lots of gags, some big red snapper. Uh, overall, it's been a great time to get out there on the water. Shout out to Samuel with the nice scampi right there. Those are my favorite eating fish, I think. Definitely my favorite eating grouper. Eh, I wouldn't, ah, maybe strawberry grouper too, but scamp is one of my favorites for sure. Top five. We'll give it top five. And shout out to Hojo and Steve from Ashland, Kentucky for my special bottle, uh, mason jar, if you will, of uh, the moonshine here. <laughs> Definitely appreciate that. <laughs> that went really well for us during uh, Hurricane Elsa, let me tell you. And uh, we've had a few of our supporters stop by and pick up their free supporter shirt. Here's Chris Collins stopped by the office today. Uh, Jared Boggs, Estelle Wolfman, they've all picked up their supporter shirts. So if you're a supporter, don't forget to stop by and pick up your shirts uh, tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to around noon. You can stop by and pick up those supporter shirts in person if you're a supporter and you're local. If you're not local uh, or if you're not a supporter, you can become one whenever you want. Uh, But if you are local, you can pick one up. If you're not, we're going to have them on our new online, new and improved online store. And Josh, if you don't mind, show the peoples 
our new online store from our homepage of our website. We'll show you how to navigate there. The new online store is definitely popping, popping to say the least. We've got some really cool stuff on there uh, that we want to show you here. So if you go to hubbardsmarina.com, click the shop tab and then click marina store, it's going to take you over to shop.hubbardsmarina.com and you'll see the new and improved online store. We've got some souvenirs, we got some tackle items, but tonight we wanted to show you the new apparel. So we got a couple new apparel items, our new Salinity Frigate, uh, frigate Bird uh, shirts, Warbird also called. Uh, some really cool designs that Salinity, excuse me, Salinity came up for us. So we got the Snook rubbing shirt. We've got the Mahi Mahi rubbing shirt, which I wore the other day to the radio show. It was really, really cool. I enjoyed it. But the Snook rubbing shirt is cool. Uh, so there's a lot of cool new apparel items. Josh, can you go back to the homepage of our online store? Uh, and then wanted to show you guys the tackle section. So we got a lot of tackle items uh, so far, still working on more. Once we get into September, we slow way down. We're going to do, uh, we're going to close the, st uh, the shop uh, during the day. We're going to get the boats out in the morning, then close the shop probably two or three days in a row and do a hard count of all our inventory. And we're going to get almost all, all our apparel and a bunch of our tackle on the online store. So soon, very soon, within a few months, we will have this thing fully loaded and uh, very excited about that, to say the least. So definitely check out the online store if you have not already. There's a bunch of new stuff there that you're really going to enjoy if you can't come down to the shop and see it in person. But what started all that was the supporter shirts will be on there soon. If you are a supporter, you'll be able to order your supporter shirt through the online store uh, with a code we provide in the private supporters group. And all you have to do is pay for shipping. The shirt will be free. You'll just have to cover shipping. So with that, let's talk about the weather. Josh, take us to the weather links page if you don't mind. And we're going to talk a little bit about the weather for the next couple days, show you guys what's going on weather-wise. Luckily, no hurricane in the forecast. If you go to fishing trips, scroll down, there's weather links or the info tab. The weather links is the first option under info. You can uh, click that wind finder forecast for the 5 and 10 hour forecast area. It kind of gives you a good ground truthing quick view of what to expect uh, this coming week and this coming week unfortunately is more of the same kind of up and down turbulent weather unfortunately so we are looking at around 10 to 15 knot winds through the week and kind of up and down sea conditions Monday a solid two foot and now this is the uh, inshore near shore forecast Tuesday around two and a half Wednesday as much as three and then uh, Thursday, it calms down a little bit into the weekend. Weekend's definitely looking a little better right now. Uh, but that's kind of the inshore forecast. You can go back to the weather links page and on the weather links page, scroll down to that 12 hour extreme area. It's going to show you a little further offshore. Same kind of trend. Monday, about two and a half. Tuesday and Wednesday, almost three and a half. Wednesday's looking and calling for rain, unfortunately. Then Thursday, it starts to calm down into the weekend, looking much better through the weekend. Into next week, looking beautiful right now. So a little turbulent this week, not perfectly flat calm, but not super rough either, which is good. Hoping that stays the same where it's at least doable, especially on the long range, larger boats. Uh, now, the 12 hour extreme is going to be a little tricky this week, especially Wednesday, but we're going to keep a close eye on it and let you guys know as we get closer. Uh, the Tuesday 39 hour trip does have some open spots on it right now. So if you wanted to pop over to that 39 hour trip Tuesday, you could always do that. We can see here on Mike's weather page, the forecast trends through the prog charts. This is kind of what I keep an eye on, 
keep an eye on. And uh, this is the forecast for tomorrow. You can see some severe storms kind of pushing their way out in front of that occluded front. An occluded front is just a fancy way of saying the weather has no idea what it's doing. Uh, very confused, if you will. And then this is Tuesday. Uh, still a lot of moisture kind of hanging out in our area. This gets into Wednesday. A high pressure settles in behind that occluded front. And then we get into Thursday. That high pressure starts easing off of us into uh Oh, that was Wednesday. High pressure easing off Thursday, eases off more. And let's get, not get lost. Friday, I'm not the best with the mouse. <laughs> That's why I stick to talking and not working the mouse. Uh, Friday, you can see it really start to ease off of our area. And then we get into the weekend looking much better. So that basically that high pressure just kind of lingers and dances around and it will slowly back off. So that's the trend this week. And that's why we have that increased weather chance uh, because that high pressure is going to be kind of hanging out. Plus we've got uh, the, the, moisture the tropical moisture a lot of potential energy in the atmosphere along with that high pressure system so that's what we're looking at this week and then hopefully next week that trend will kind of ease off a little bit and we'll see a break in that wind pattern and hopefully some calmer conditions with less wind so that's what we're looking at right now we got into the weather. We talked about the new apparel. It is time for our first giveaway of the night. Remember, if you are wanting to win a trip, you have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So go to Facebook.com, find the Hubbard's Marina page, comment one time on that live video. Michael, Jimmy, what's going on? 2,500 stars. You guys rock. Jimmy family, miss you guys. Hopefully everybody's doing good. Uh, but as I was saying, comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. That enters you for a chance to win. And then once you uh, are entered to win, you can watch on YouTube. You can watch on Instagram. If you're picked as a lucky winner, you do have to be watching live. And then claim the free trip by texting that phone number down there in the corner. In the corner. Corner. <laughs> so make sure you text that phone number within about five minutes to claim that free trip. That's how it works. I've explained it twice tonight. Sometimes people say they don't know how to win, so I wanted to make sure I reiterated it tonight. So let's see who has the first free trip of the night, a five-hour half day for two guests. Josh, let's see who won. Mel, Mel, Mel from Middlesburg. See you Tuesday. Well, Mel, you just won a five-hour half day for two guests, so make sure to claim it by texting that phone number in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, 727-393-1947. So make sure you text that phone number to claim your free trip, Mel. With that, let's quickly talk a little bit about some upcoming events uh, every week we have kind of our live show notes, but we're jumping between screens, talking about different things, and sometimes I forget to mention things. So this week, I've got a cheat sheet to make sure I didn't miss nothing. So events coming up, Ocean Aid 360, our friend Captain Neil Holland and his wife Danielle started this local nonprofit called Ocean Aid 360, and they do their ghost trap rodeo. It's mainly targeting those ghost traps, uh, but it's also targeting ocean plastics and other plastics that are cruising in the bay, so you can go out and join the event. That's coming up this Saturday. You can volunteer. You can win free stuff. And all you're basically doing is ridding the bay and our beaches of plastics, ghost traps, and whatever else you might find along the way. Whether it's balloons, lawn chairs, buoys. But we're mainly hunting for ghost traps. And what a ghost trap is, is basically 
when a crab fisherman or a pin fisherman or anybody sets out a trap, whether it's a fish trap, crab trap, and then leaves it out there, sometimes another boater will come across it, run it over, rip the buoy off of it, or someone will cut the buoy off of it incidentally, or a storm comes and makes the crab trap walk or, or, or drift away from its original station or location, and then it becomes lost. And when that trap is out there, it continues to attract fish. They swim in there, and they get trapped in there, and uh, they hang out in there for safety originally, but then they can't get out. And it continues to kill fish, bait fish, crustaceans and it's just a non-stop killer for the life of the trap and they last a while especially those coated metal ones so this program this organization is all about going out there and collecting up that stuff so jeff definitely check out their website oceanaid360.org and get involved with their events this coming saturday like i said they have an event coming up it's in six different locations around Tampa Bay area. So there's probably a location near you. You can join in a boat, a kayak. You can do it from shore. Check out their website. Definitely check out that event. It'll be a great time. Also, another upcoming event on my wife's birthday, July 27th. So I probably will not be there if I value uh, my... Uh, my, <laughs> I won't continue with that joke. You get the picture. It's my wife's birthday. July 27th, fishing conversation, the real animals fishing conversation coming up. That's Captain Mike Anderson and, Cap and uh, Mike Mahoney from TA Mahoney's will be there at Furman Newport Ritchie. Furman Newport Ritchie, they're going to be talking about fishing nearshore and offshore and inshore. And there's going to be free barbecue and some other cool stuff going on. So definitely check that out. 6 p.m to 8 30 p.m july 27th also the real animals junior pro staff tournament is another event that's going on uh coming up here shortly if you haven't heard about it you haven't been involved in it if you've got a young angler if you've got an 8 10 12 14 15 16 year old i don't know the age brackets i probably should off the top of my head Definitely want to get them involved in the Real Animals Junior Pro Staff program. Right now, they're doing a tournament, so they're not accepting new pro staff uh, young anglers, but they will finish this tournament up shortly. And then once it's turn, once the first tournament is over, they're going to be accepting a bunch more junior pro staffers to their program. So if you've got young anglers get them involved. It's really, really cool. Uh, it's a great way to get them hooked on fishing even more, meet other kids that are hooked on fishing. And uh, it's just an awesome thing. The real animals Captain Mike Anderson is putting on. So definitely check it out. Don't miss out. It's a free program. And they're going to be accepting new members shortly. Your kids get some fishing gear. They get to meet other fishing friends. It's just a win-win-win all the way around. Awesome, awesome thing that Captain Mike's doing. With that, Josh, I think it is time to get into some questions. Let's see what kind of questions we got going on. And also, besides questions, if you want to call in your question, if you want to ask your question live over the airwaves, you can call that phone number down there. Once you reach our recording dial extension 306, if you have a serious question and you want to talk seriously about fishing or anything going on right now, you can give us a call at that phone number down there, dial extension 306, and uh, you can ask your question over the phone if you'd like to as well. All right, so let's see what uh, we have for our first question, Josh. Uh, wow, I won a trip. That's awesome. Can I give it to a friend? The free trip giveaways are just that. They're free trip donations that we're doing to try to make it more exciting for you guys to watch the show, but they are non-transferable and they cannot be used during spring break or summer uh, around red snapper season. So March, April, June, and July, they're not redeemable and they're non-transferable. So you have to go fishing for free. I apologize. <laughs> or you can use it with your better half or your friend. 
but you can go along and get the enjoyment of joining them. Highly recommend it. Definitely should try it. What is the biggest red snapper so far? So our biggest red snapper so far is close to 21 pounds. It was just over 20, I believe, was the biggest red snapper caught in a 39-hour fishing trip. Josh, can you think of anything bigger? Am I missing something? I believe um, it was a 24-pound hit the docks. No. No? Mm-mm. What was the 24? A 24-pound red snapper is gigantic. That's like state record material. Look up the state record of red snapper. I know the world record red snapper is going to be closer to like 30 pounds, but state of Florida, we don't get them super big. Uh, on the kind of Big Bend area to the Keys. Uh, holy cow, that's stupid. All right, well, that's definitely pounds. Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> the state record for Red Snapper is 46 pounds, 8 ounces. That's ridiculous. So in our area, like a 24, 25-pounder is monstrous. To get a really big, like almost 30-pound Red Snapper, you really need to be up in the northern Gulf or in the Atlantic. So there is actually scientific proof of different families of red snapper so you'll get a different kind of genetic makeup of these red snapper and some are kind of predisposed to be certain size classes there's some that are only going to get to be 20 24 25 inches there's others that will grow as much as 40 inches Uh, so really really depends on the area generally around big bend to the keys a 30 pound red snapper is like a trophy once in a lifetime i've heard of a few closer to like 33, 35, but that's very rare. Uh, To catch a 40-plus pound red snapper in our area, I've never heard of personally. That is definitely Atlantic Coast uh, or somewhere up in the northern Gulf, I would imagine. I would guess. But Josh is, I'm sure, going to Google it as I get to my next question. Uh, Do you have the long sleeve... uh, UPF 50 shirts that really cool the body and pull moisture. So I believe you're talking about the performance wear t-shirts. We definitely have performance wear. We have long sleeve performance wear. We have hooded performance wear. We've got a bunch of different performance wear shirts in our shop. Uh, On the online store, we don't have a huge selection yet, uh, but we're working on improving that as I talked about earlier. Uh, So they will get bigger and bigger and uh, bigger in selection sizes on the online store. But in our shop, in person, you can get hooded uh, performance wear. So check it out. Check it out. Next question, Josh. What do we got for the people? How much will the passing storm change fishing? Well, the change, the biggest noticeable change from Elsa uh, was uh, the definitely the red tide situation. So the red tide situation kind of started in our area early, early June at like the beginning of red snapper season is when it first started kind of making its way into Tampa Bay. And then uh, it kind of hung on the south side of Tampa Bay. And then around mid-June kind of made its way into our area. Got a little bad for us there around like July 15th to like, or excuse me, July, June, June, June 15th to like June 20th. And then it kind of backed off and almost virtually we forgot about it towards the end of June there. Uh, And then we came into early July, still beautiful around the area, still some red tide on the south shore of Tampa Bay, but that was basically where it was hanging. Uh, Unfortunately, Elsa came by and the southwest breeze really pushed all that concentrated red tide mess that was kind of hanging out from around Piney Point to like Anna Maria around the South Shore, Apollo Beach area, Ruskin. It pushed it all up into like Weedon Island, downtown St. Pete, all the way to like Pinellas Point area. And it is extremely tough in areas around South 
uh, Pinellas County and southeast Pinellas County. Starting to get bad more in our area, closer to Johns Pass, but hasn't gotten really bad around Johns Pass. Uh, hasn't gotten super crazy, uh, to say the least. But this morning was probably the worst watercolor that I've seen in a long time. Around sunrise, it was literally like coffee. It looked like I had poured a cup of very dark coffee, dark roast coffee, and then cut my hand. And it all mixed together. That's what the water looked like this morning. It was not good. Uh, and then the tide changed. We got an incoming tide. And by mid-morning, it was beautiful in John's Pass again. Uh, but it was noticeable. You could kind of feel the tickle in your throat. Uh, and there was a few dead fish around. Not super crazy around our, our area, but definitely noticeable. So we're starting to see it. Uh, more and more, but the big worry is around South Pinellas County, Southern Pinellas County, B Southern Bogusiega Bay, all the way around to like Whedon Island and throughout Tampa Bay. I was on the phone with an inshore charter captain, Captain Chris Wiggins, uh, on the way to the studio tonight, and he was telling me about some very horrific stories with even marine mammals like dolphins, manatees, sea turtles. Uh, being basically killed by this red tide. So really hoping and praying, keeping my fingers and toes crossed that hopefully this strong high pressure will kind of push a lot of this out of the bay and get it out of that shallow hot water and, and break it up a little bit. Who knows, though? It's it basically time will tell. Like I said, it got pretty bad around mid-July, and or I keep saying that, mid-June, in our area and then it broke up very quickly and kind of went away but it doesn't help that Hillsborough County dumped 60,000 gallons of wastewater into the Hillsborough River at the north end of Tampa Bay just three days ago and then in Port of Tampa 90,000 gallons of sewage water went into Port of Tampa right in the water so it doesn't help when our county, city, and state governments stand by and watch the continual dumping of pollution into our very shallow, very warm, and already red tide uh, present, red tide prolific bay. Uh, it's extremely infuriating and frustrating, to say the least. So we're working on a few things in the background to hopefully try to get the right information on what we should do to work towards a positive change. Uh, whether you believe it or not, there are a lot of organizations working tirelessly to try to address this. CCA is definitely starting to get involved more and more. Groups like Captains for Clean Water. Uh, I sit on the board of the Florida Guides Association. We're trying to get some irons in the fire. Uh, our West Coast Charter Captains Association that I uh, founded and sit on the board of, uh, we're kind of uh, banding together and holding a meeting here shortly with the head of science for the state of Florida. So we're definitely trying to make some strides towards positive change, but nothing happens quickly and we're all got to kind of just stick our heads to the grindstone, our noses to the grindstone, and chip away at this very, very large issue. Red tide's natural. It's something that's always been around for centuries. Uh, so it's not something new. It's not something that we can stop. But there are ways that we could maybe curb or perhaps lessen the effects of red tide by, hmm, I don't know. Let's stop dumping sewage water into the bay. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, right? Well, so we're working uh, on things. What's up? Let's uh, let's fix uh, St. Pete's uh, wastewater problem. <laughs> yeah, St. Pete one? loves dumping sewage in the bay. Loves it. Uh, that's every time it rains, it overflows, you know, accidentally. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, our area has such a great growth uh because of our environment. Everybody wants to live in Florida because of our beautiful beaches, our robust fishery, our gorgeous wildlife and environment. And if we just keep totally 
pooping on it, literally poop water on it, <laughs> we're going to kill that, that draw uh, to our beautiful area and what we all enjoy about living here. So we really need to kind of take a stand. Uh, to me, it's resiliency. And resiliency is kind of a term used in government and politics to uh, kind of, I guess, allude to uh, the ability for growth and life to go on while also making the environment around it resilient to human expansion and human growth. So the biggest thing for me is we need to have a responsible growth plan in place. We continue to build these high rises in downtown St. Pete, for example. When I was just 10, 12 years ago, downtown St. Pete was one of the places that my parents wouldn't let me go after a certain time of night just because it was not always uh, as as beautiful and pretty as it is nowadays. And nowadays, it's got a bustling nightlife. It's gorgeous down there in downtown St. Pete. They've done a ton to really beautify and really make that place attractive to anybody. Uh, but They've added all these high-rise buildings in the infrastructure, the sewage lines. They haven't been addressed. Even in my neighborhood where I bought a home, this place was built when Seminole was orange groves. So they had this small little sewage line going into this neighborhood. And now all of a sudden the neighborhood's expanded. There's houses everywhere. And they never addressed the small little sewage line that goes in and out of this neighborhood. So not until there was huge sewage issues did they start going and tearing up roads and replacing them with very large kind of 2020 style sewage pipes. Really, COVID did a lot because everybody was off the road. So it gave them time to address these kind of infrastructure issues. But they should be planning ahead nowadays when you're building a subdivision or trying to revitalize a neighborhood start with the infrastructure start making sure there's enough sewage capacity to support these high-rise buildings that we're starting to build so very very uh long tough road ahead but we all need to work together and getting on social media and uh complaining about it like i am right now doesn't do anything you got to Put your head down and put your nose to the grindstone. Make some phone calls, write some letters, and keep the pressure on. And that's what we need to do. So getting the right people in place to make sure we can do that for sure. So before I get too much off on a tangent, Josh, uh, my watch is blowing up here, so I can't. There's the time. It is 9.10. It is time to give away our second free trip of the night. We're going to give away a 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. That is a $218 value. Josh, let's show the people who won. You know what I need to get? It's like one of those uh, deal or no deals. The <laughs> Yeah, the, oh, I want to see one of the those wheels. Switch. I want to get one of those wheels. Well, we'll get one. I can get you one. Anyways, here we go. Let's find out. Patricia Long from Maryland. Congratulations, Patricia. You just won a 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. Let's see, Josh. We got a special, special giveaway tonight. We've got some Salinity stickers. Sean Matthews with Salinity Gear dropped off some stickers for my truck, and he was nice enough to throw in a couple extra stickers for you guys. He enjoys the show. He checked it out a few times. And Salinity Gear is uh, donating some stickers to give away tonight. So let's see who won some free, really cool bumper stickers. If you want to look like my truck driving down the road, this is <laughs> not quite. We're not giving you a wrap. But we'll give you some cool bumper stickers. And uh, speaking of bumper stickers, we got some really cool Hubbard's Marina bumper stickers in now. Uh, and we are turning our supporter shirt into a sticker very shortly, too. So excited about that because I love that shirt. Josh, let's see who won one of our free Salinity uh, bumper stickers. It's kind of a you pick. We've got a couple different Salinity bumper stickers. You 
win, and you get to choose which ones you get. Melissa Chamberlain, congratulations. You won a Salinity bumper sticker. Congratulations. So you can claim that sticker, stop by our shop, and pick out what you want. Pick out which one you want. All right. So with that, we did the 10-hour giveaway. Let's see what other questions we have here, Josh. Need to do a Florida residence drawing. Well, that's not fair. We have a lot of viewers from other areas too. And you never know. Some people win that are locals. I, I know I can think of a couple different times where it was all locals that had won during a show. It's random. That's the beauty of a random name generator is it picks randomly. Um, let's trying see here. You, trying to get you a good one. Trying to get me a good question. That's They're good. all good questions. There's no such thing as a bad question, people. But we want a good topic. That's what Josh meant to say. Yeah, because I got on a, a red tide kick there for a moment. And yeah. I did see one talking about... We're not getting too far down the red tide road. Yeah, I did see one where somebody asked if you can eat the fish. Yes, yeah. So uh, red tide does not affect our ability to go near shore and offshore fishing. During my lifetime, some of the worst red tides we've had... 2005, 2017, and 18, we had some really bad red tides, but they never stopped us from catching and keeping and eating plenty of good eaten fish near shore and offshore. So definitely doesn't affect our ability to catch fish on our fishing trips near shore and offshore, but it affects our ability to get live bait because those live pinfish you order they come from the area where Red Tide is located. For example, this morning, our pinfish guy uh, is battling some issues uh, with working on the water every day and the warm uh, climates and uh, dealing with some stuff. And he powered through, worked through the night, caught a boatload of live pinfish only to put them in a closed live well system, which means recirculating nice, clean oxygen, not red tide water. Gets them all out. They're looking fresh. Brings them to the dock. Puts them onto the boat. Doesn't even put them in the live well. Takes them right from his boat in oxygen-rich water into the boat's live well for the 10-hour all day today. They hit the live well on the boat and immediately turned upside down and died because of how much concentrated red tide was around the area this morning. Like I said, it cleared up around mid-morning with that incoming tide, but unfortunately, almost impossible to keep live bait alive and make it to the boat. So very tricky. We've been paying for live bait that we have not been selling, and we've been compensating our live bait uh, fisherman Brian uh, because we've wanted him to catch live bait uh, regardless of how hard and difficult it was so we've been working with him to make it happen and we're getting to a point right now where it's futile so we're trying to work on some things to keep Brian busy and make sure he can support and feed his family but we're getting to a point where we're kind of Almost ready to throw in the towel on the whole live bait attempts. But Brian and I got a few more tricks up our sleeves. So I'm not saying we're giving up yet. We're going to try uh, to go further offshore and actually catch the bait and house it offshore. And then the boats will be able to meet us offshore and get that bait past the area where we're seeing this. And like I said, who knows? A few more days, something could drastically change and it could get out of the area. So we don't know. But right now, we've got some irons in the fire to try to figure a workaround for you guys. Uh, but to answer the question, yes, you can eat the fish. Even if you catch a fish in an area where red tide is present, it is still plenty healthy. What's not healthy is eating shellfish, mollusks. So like clams, oysters, scallops in an area where red tide is present. Super not healthy. <laughs> but... Outside of that, fin fish, reef fish, plenty safe, even if red tide is super concentrated and present in the area. But it's not in the area we're fishing. Go ahead, I would Josh. Say, uh, you know, as long as you're, it's not an injured fish, you know, just clean Yeah, it, common it, sense clean of it, balance. Rinse your fillets, you know, put them in a fresh bag. Don't stick them in your ice chest where 
you know, or back in your live well where you had this water sitting, you'll be fine. No, you can stick them in your live well, too. You're going to cook all that off. It's just extra protein. Just rinse them off. <laughs> no, what, what you, what you want to focus on is just common sense abounds. Like Josh said, you don't want to eat an injured fish. Uh, so, for example, if you go out into the woods and you find a deer that's kind of limping and looks funky and his fur is all messed up and he walks up to you and kind of looks at you funky and falls over, you don't want to throw him in the back of your truck and take him home and feed him to your family for dinner. He's not healthy. But you find that deer in the woods, you got to hunt him, chase him for five miles, and he looks beautiful and super healthy and uh, meaty and fatty. That's a healthy deer. Same thing offshore and near shore and inshore. You find a redfish floundering on the surface, struggling to breathe, probably not a good idea to eat that fish. But you catch a fish, and he gives you a good hard fight, and he's super healthy and hearty. That's a healthy fish. You can eat it. So common sense, people. Use it, and you'll be fine. Do you charge money to fish on the docks at Hubbard's Marina? No, we do not. You're more than welcome to come down and fish our docks as long as our office is open. and We're not actively loading and unloading a trip as long as you don't mind cleaning up after yourself. Unfortunately, I have to say that nowadays. It's crazy. And then also, be respectful of the wildlife. If we see you purposely trying to shoo pelicans away with your rod tip and whipping your rod at pelicans or or repeatedly hooking pelicans or uh, not obeying fishing regulations, blatantly disregarding the fish being out of the water too long, some, some out of the ordinary and just being crazy, we're going to talk to you about it once, and uh, second time, we're just going to ask you to leave and not come back. Unfortunately, that's happened more and more and more. It's pretty crazy. The other day, I came out, and someone was literally trying to beat a pelican with a fishing rod. It blew my mind. The other day, we had one kid who hooked a pelican eight times, not four, not five, eight times. It was crazy. And then at one point, I was like, all right, you have to be doing this on purpose, uh, so very frustrating that we have to weed through it. You know, what's funny, Josh, I was talking to my wife about this. We're eating dinner tonight, got home from work, five 30, put, put my kid down, scarfing down some food. My wife's watching TV and the show, a uh, commercial comes on. And nowadays they do these drug commercials where it's like, take this medication. If you have headaches, it might cause you to die. It might cause this. It might cause that. It might might make you 10 times more sick, but you're not going to have headaches. But don't take it if you're allergic to this medication. How, what? How am I gonna Why know? do you have to say, don't take this medication if you're allergic to it? That's a thing now. They say that in every drug commercial now. Don't take this if you're allergic. That really frustrates me that we have to say that nowadays. But you know, you know what's even worse is car manuals. You remember, I don't know, being around your dad or in the shop, you would see a car. Well, I never saw a, a manual. What's that? My it, dad would throw those things away first thing. <laughs> well, some some people have car manuals. Uh, it literally tells you everything about the car. You know, now yeah. back in the day, it was common sense. Yeah, they you skip know, over things. Don't like drink how to the turn battery the acid. Don't drink the antifreeze. Yeah. Now, when you open them, they're labeled, do not consume battery acid. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's like, are you serious? Like, yeah. when? And you know, you know, it's like Hubbard's Marina. Like, some of the things that we put on there, like, I'm thinking to myself, do we really need to put that on the website? But the reason we put it on the website is because it's happened. Someone's asked mm -hmm. that. Uh, so Our emails. Someone's, someone's drank battery acid for them to put a warning Several on there. Times. <laughs> I mean, even our emails, you know, I had to put the, this is free trips. This is not a coupon, you know, yeah. because somebody had to ask, oh, well, where do I get this coupon? Yeah. And got upset with us. I don't know how many times people have gotten upset about donations. We're giving, we're giving a charitable donation away and someone gets upset about it. It's pretty crazy, but whatever. Dumbing down of America. That's right, Mike. Yeah. Oh, we have a question here. There's other, there's, there's other words Saltiga. for it. That I would like to use, but we're politically, politically correct. Uh, has it, what do you? What was the question, Josh? Uh, has anyone used? Oh, has anybody used the new Saltiga? This little beautiful Going princess Friday right and here. Can't wait to try mine. 
Yeah, I I can't wait to try mine and break mine in. Unfortunately, my wife love her to death, and uh, I love our baby girl who is on the way, our baby Emma. She is just a few. I mean, we're down to days at this yeah. point. Holy moly! I need another days. drink. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're less than 20 days, dog. Yeah, less. Crazy. Yeah. I'm going to have kids with an S. Crazy. Yeah. Our son, Jack, turns 2 August 25th. Our daughter, Emma, is due August 1st. So if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. Well, my life just continues to get busier, and it is extremely frustrating. But... It is what it is. It's a good problem to have. Great problem to have is what I always say. Uh, love my family. Love my son. I can't wait to meet my daughter. And love you guys. And uh, putting you guys on fishing trips and doing these awesome shows. Always a good time. Plus the new radio show, Real Animals. There it is. Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings. Waking up at 4.30. Lots of fun. Going to the radio show and hanging out. But... Dude, did you listen to the radio show this weekend? No, I, I didn't. Wake I up literally till 1 had chills. I was Saturday. shaking. I was totally fangirling out, bro. Got to talk to Captain Sig Hansen of the Deadliest Catch. Interview Captain Sig Hansen of the really? Deadliest Catch I'm from catch his that. home in Seattle on the radio live. It was awesome because, like, the Deadliest Catch has been on TV for like ever. It's like, They're on their seventeenth season. Yeah, I was gonna say like I'm thirty one year or I'm thirty years old. Yeah, they're on seventeen seasons. That's crazy. I was thirteen years old when those things came out. I remember out. when Dad come home from work, yeah, take a shower, eat dinner, and boom, deadliest catch. Deadliest catch is the bomb, bomb, and uh, it's pretty crazy that I got the chance to talk to him. It's Sig Hansen. The Northwestern was always one of my favorites, so it was really I'm cool have to, to get to uh, probably start including these on our website. Be yeah, on the lookout yeah. for podcast, uh, realmarino.com forward slash real animals. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it is uh, Saturday mornings on News Radio 970 WFLA, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. News Radio 970 WFLA. You can also watch it live or listen to it live, excuse me, on uh, the iHeartMedia app or check out Real Animals on Facebook and like the Real Animals page and you can see the Facebook live stream of the radio show. So you can kind of see us while we're talking live on the radio. Plus, Josh over here, the crazy mastermind he is, uh, has now got a laptop super engineered beefed up laptop uh and we are working with captain mike to actually yeah show the, show the people the video so this is captain mike's facebook page the real animals fishing show on facebook this is the current live show that mike does so obviously the radio you want to listen on the radio because you get clear audio it's beautiful but this is the live stream so he puts the earphones the headphones over his phone and uh, you can hear the radio show through the live stream. But Josh is going to take this thing to a whole nother level. We're going to have the, the fancy borders and the, the, the phone number. And it's going to be a lot better quality. Plus, we've got a little stand, so it'll be up higher. So you'll be able to see my beautiful face across the table, you know. And, <laughs> and it's going to be pretty cool. So we're excited about that as uh, we beef up. Uh, uh, real animal show and kind of add a little bit of flair, some fanciness, sprinkle some Josh on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Let's, let's not say that. Ever yeah. Again. I like that. I like that term. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, going to sprinkle some Josh on you. <laughs> so definitely stay tuned to the real animal show. <laughs> it's going to be getting better and better. Not that it's not already great. I'm just trying to show some value in uh, him asking me and honoring me uh, with the partnership uh, in co-hosting his show with him. So it's still Mike's show. He runs the ship. I'm just uh, the lowly first mate in this whole endeavor, but hopefully going to be working my way up to co-captain soon <laughs> with Josh's help. So uh, definitely check out the Real Animal Show. The other thing was, I'm surprised no one's called. Is, is my phone broke? No, Josh doesn't fish. Come on, Todd. You know this. 
Yeah, Josh does not fish. Josh gets seasick, people. Wow. Very seasick. That was one time. That was the only time. <laughs> no, I've been on a couple other trips. A couple five other hour half and a ten. Days. No, I went couple on a ten half hour. Days. I went on a ten hour after. I don't recall that. Yeah, I snuck out. I, I had to do some filming. Da, da, called da, da, in da. sick. Yeah, and then I, <laughs> I snuck in right underneath your nose. Snuck. I don't, I don't think that's a word. I'm a little too big to be sneaking anywhere. Yeah, sneaky. <laughs> very, very sneaky. All right, let's see. What other questions do we have? Uh, Hunter from Arkansas. I love using you guys every time we come down every year. We're coming later this year around October instead of the spring. Good for you, man. Skip the spring break and summertime chaos. Come down in October. Really around uh, kids going back to school late August, early September into like mid-November and then early December and then... January to Valentine's Day is the best time of year to come because I, I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> it's the best time to come because that's the time of year where we're less busy, much less busy, is around, uh, like I said, when kids go back to school till around Thanksgiving and then that time in early December between Thanksgiving and Christmas, stay away from spring break, stay away from uh, red snapper season, and then stay away from that week around a couple days before Christmas till around just a few days after the new year. And plus it's cooler. That's the peak time. And it's it, cooler. Yeah, cooler. Uh, but you do have to watch out for the weather a little bit more because those times of year we have those uh, cold fronts. And the cold fronts make things a little tricky weather-wise. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh, I got to hit the right button. Estelle, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you now. How are you today? <laughs> Tonight? I'm doing wonderfully, thank you, after the 39-hour trip. How are you enjoying your new supporter shirt? Did you go out to dinner and show all your friends? I actually did a video with it on also. Ooh. And, uh, yes, I wore it um, proudly this morning uh, when I got off the boat and posted the picture of the T-shirt on Facebook. There you go. Thank you, Estelle. Now, I did see your brand new Ford Bronco. I didn't realize you got a new car until you were driving out. Yes, I did. And Todd has, uh, you know, my son, he has um, said that uh, or suggested that you should uh, get me a car wrap for Hubbard so that I could uh, drive it around Brandon. I would be very, very... uh, considerate of that and almost seriously considering that because i trust you uh but today you ruined that you you shot that to pieces this morning estelle when i asked you to back up into that other parking spot and you told me and i quote i don't back up i can't back up (laughs) Um, so me wrapping your vehicle really doesn't sound like a good business idea when you're saying you cannot back up excuse me but i can use a mouse you can use what? A mouse. A mouse. A mouse. Oh, yes. I can't use a mouse, <laughs> but I can back up a vehicle. <laughs> okay, same difference. You should see him I back up burn. his truck down this. Oh, I whipped that big old <laughs> yeah, truck. Yeah, does. Yeah, I, I grew up driving a big old Suburban. Then I had a 1985 250 that the steering wheel literally came off the steering column. You had to hold the steering wheel in a certain position or the truck would shut off. It was awesome. It was very oh, dangerous. Dear. Talk about anti-theft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I, you, I started, I started and cl- turned off the truck with a screwdriver. You stick a screwdriver in there. I you twist it. Like truck would turn over. You pull the screwdriver off. Throw it on the floor. When you wanted to turn the truck off, screwdriver <laughs> back in. Unfortunately, it's a beautiful truck. That. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then you get in, and it looks like somebody. <laughs> I love tried that truck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I used to have a car that you had to open with a clothes hanger, oh, but yeah. um, yeah, I've had those uh, vehicles as well. But yeah. I will practice Building if those. if you would um, if you would wrap my car. Those things don't have reverse cameras. Yeah, we'll we'll talk more about this yes, whole wrap the thing problem, once we uh, Left once we there. work on uh, backing into a parking spot. Then we'll talk yeah. more. We don't have big but enough I parking lot. I have been line. asked several times about the next women's show and 
I have had many questions given to me, and someone's even recommended several times that Jennifer Roberts be a co-host, I saw. But, uh, you're, um, you're breaking up. We're, we're losing yeah. you. Yeah, there's static. <laughs> <laughs> But, but no, there you are, are welcome on the show anytime, Estelle. But how oh, was your trip this weekend? It was awesome. And let me just tell you, I caught the uh, giant porgy with the, um, the uh, what was it called? The porgy delight that Will made for me. And oh, I must porgy say. Porgy special bay. It, it was porgy delight. <laughs> and uh, I will tell you that I reeled it in and said, oh, it's not working. And then I tossed it out again, and I said, this porgy is not being delightful. And as soon as I said that, I got hit so hard. And I will tell you, it took um, TJ, who was standing beside me, and uh, Glenn, I think, um, Glenn, well, TJ held my arm, held my rod while I reeled it in and then we all three held it to get a picture. Jeremy helped too, but he, I asked him to wipe my brow as I was <laughs> reeling it in. It was so excruciatingly hot. Yes. And then, um, uh, but that was for the grouper. That was for the red grouper, excuse me. The porgy, though, we thought was a gat grouper. And then, um, Sean, porgy, porgy, porgy. Mm. <laughs> I think it's he Sean caught the. That's where I'm going to go. With porgy, that. yes. Um, and I was just stuck on the porgy there, but he caught, okay, I caught a grouper and it broke me off and then he caught it right after and he won the, 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 um, what do you call it? The The jackpot. jackpot. And, um, they even found my hook in his mouth and I told him that I wore it out for him, but (laughs) (laughs) he wouldn't even share the uh, filet with me, but it was a great trip. It was a excruciatingly hot but it was such a good group of people it was we all had a blast it was really fun and we caught a lot of fish and yeah. it looked and, like you uh, guys had a nice a kind of mix of fish i saw a lot of yellow tails big vermilions mangroves porgies and then you saw uh red grouper scamp gags yep. big red snapper there, mangroves. it was definitely a variety, and I will tell you, I got to watch the wahoo come in, and that was something else. Aren't those that the was, most beautiful fish when they come out of the water? It was beautiful, and and um, I actually, Todd got the carcass, and he put it in a garbage bag on in my new car, and it bled over the back. <laughs> in the new Ford Bronco, you got wahoo blood. You bathed it in blood, huh? Yep. It is christened. It was his first fishing trip, yes. That's what happens when you take your son fishing. He's going to get your <laughs> I car know. bloody. I know. I'm going to keep the piece of Wahoo that he has because it's in my refrigerator, so he might not get that back. And, there you go. And I might hey, make yeah. him wash my car. So what but was hey, the hot I'll let bait? you guys go. What was the oh, hot, the hot bait, bait? Okay. I will tell you, the pinfish lived, however, the um, Porgy uh, Delight had to be the best. <laughs> All right, so um, what was the porgy delight? We, we we alluded to it this morning. I never got a straight answer what it was. Everybody, when I ask, just says, watch the video and laughs. Yeah, um, I don't actually know what it was. We'll just put it on my hook. <laughs> and and he, he did this magic to it, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, I guess I'll even have to watch the video. Um, it probably right. had to be censored, but... Um, yeah. A lot of people were catching the one guy beside us, uh, Mike. He he killed it. He got um, he he was catching everything. He got gag. He got um, yellowtail. He caught snapper. His limited snapper. He caught everything. And I think he was just using um, the uh, not the thread pins because uh, let's see uh, the um, Sardines. what are they called? Sardines, thank you. He was just using. Uh oh, we've got we've got. Uh, he's she's asking the crowd. <laughs> she's phoning a friend. <laughs> you still no, there? I'm sorry, my my earplug fell out, and then oh. I just heard all the all the talking. <laughs> but um, so sardines, thread fins, people were using octopus, squid. JT beside me, he was 
catching like huge mangoes on, um, he had shrimp. He, he bought like hmm. frozen shrimp from Walmart, I think it was, and just the peeled stuff and was wow. just throwing it out there. And he was catching things. They were hungry after Elsa, I think. Yeah, the backside of that storm had them chewing for sure. These big storms group them up on bigger structures, and uh, they they get hungry after a few days of not feeding. So I'm glad we were able to take advantage of it and fight through that kind of warmer weather. And uh, what was really odd this trip that uh, Will was telling me about during this morning's video was that you guys actually did better during the hottest portion of the day. Is that kind of what you saw as well? Um, we, yes, we witnessed the, um, we, we were having a little problem where we were because the, there was no current. It was like a hundred degrees. It was sweltering hot, no breeze. And the, um, the boat kept shifting. So like where we were fishing occasionally would be right over the anchor line. Oh, and so tough. we would be moved off, um, So we had to hurry up and drop as soon as the anchor set so that we would be on the fish. But I will tell you that the yellowtail were coming up thick. The gag, it was like, it it was, it was really good. It, it, it was a great trip. It was a little slow in certain parts, but it just when you didn't expect it, like, because usually people go in, they'll go in into the air conditioning <laughs> if it gets midday. too hot. Yeah. Well, we were pouring water over our heads, and we were just staying out there because the bite was so good. Got to grind through it. Typically, yeah, you have to. when when uh, you get to that midday doldrums where the wind quits, the, there's no current, typically the bite stinks. It's a little bit slow there in the mid part of the day when it's at its hottest, sun's at the peak. And typically, I take a break, go inside in the AC, maybe watch a movie, and uh, eat a cheeseburger, maybe drink like 30 beers. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but take a break and and kind of maybe even catch uh, a quick nap on the 39-hour trip and uh, enjoy the peacefulness of being offshore. Uh, but it's cool to hear that this trip, even during the peak time of the day, you guys still had a great bite of fish. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was an awesome trip and met a lot of new people, a lot of first timers, uh, and uh, you know it's it's uh, a lot of seeing people from that you've met before. There were like a lot of regulars, and everybody was so helpful to everybody else. It was really great. That's awesome. It really was. It was a it was a great trip. Eric was killing it. Um, I told him, you know, um, Eric. That's I good. think he caught three gag grouper. Mm-hmm. He, I told him he could not be on a video about how to pack because he had so much gear. It was like, (laughs) he he packed, he packed enough for what, well, it didn't hurt his um, fishing at all. He, (laughs) he killed it. He killed it. And then, um, couldn't do a video about how to pack. Neither could Mike up him. He brings literally a little, little kind of almost a, uh, what are those things called Josh that they use, uh, can't think of the word for it but they take like 10 cases of beer upstairs with them uh and you kick it and it's got the, like the little foot on it hand truck he's got like a hand truck with like a <laughs> chest freezer sized tackle box with another tackle box stack on top of it and i'm checking bags i'm like dude what are you even doing with this he's like well if someone needs something i got it yeah <laughs> Yeah, you got it Eric, all, dude. <laughs> Eric has a hotel cart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody makes fun of my little one. I yes. mean, come on now. But, we, we, yeah, we make it, fun was, of it was it was funny. Like and um, <laughs> uh, who? What? Craig, the one that caught the wahoo. Yeah. He told me that he had not tied retied the knot on his lure for over a year. Yes. Yeah, Craig hammock and he caught, caught the wall this trip yeah uh he was telling me the same story this morning so he's using the same nomad dtx minnow that we sell in the shop it's got a dark purple body hot pink underside white stri- white vertical stripes down the lure he tied it on in in december of last year he's caught a 
73 pound wahoo on it this trip he caught another wahoo on it he caught three tuna on it in april hasn't retied the knot or the leader in over a year that's pretty crazy and the lure looks like total total junk it's been through the ringer and back and he said it seems like the more fish he catches on it the more beat up it gets the better it does it's pretty crazy yeah and it, it's so funny that as soon as someone knows something's on, everybody goes back. It's like a grandstand situation where everybody's sitting there and just watching and waiting. Yeah. It was awesome. Everyone cheers everybody on. But the kingfish were biting, too. Oh, my gosh. I got cut off twice by kingfish, and, and they were just Thick. the other side of the boat from us. Were, they, they caught two over there and then one on the uh, trip out. So it was it was a great trip. It was hot, but it was it was great. Well, I appreciate you giving us a call and giving us a rundown of what went on and a little bit more about the trip. We'll definitely be keeping our eyes peeled for the special Estelle Wolfman how to pack for a 39 hour trip <laughs> from a lady's perspective. Uh, coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. Thank you. Yeah, Estelle. and I think you're welcome, and I think the next video will be things that I forgot because people keep coming up to me saying, but you didn't talk about this, but you didn't talk about oh, that, yeah. so I'll, I'll have another Can't let that get you down. Can't let that <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan, and uh, Josh, you're, you're awesome. Welcome. Thank you both, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good night, Estelle. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so that was Estelle talking a little bit more about this recent 39-hour trip that got back in this morning. And Mike up on my saw your comment, buddy. It was all in jest. Love you, man. <laughs> he did bring me a, a hot Philly cheesesteak from Jersey Mike's one trip. I'll never forget that. People bring me booze. I really like booze, especially Jameson Black Barrel. But Someone brings you a hot Philly cheesesteak from Jersey Mike Subs. You, you don't forget that one. <laughs> so it was all in good fun, Mike. <laughs> uh, Speaking of 39 hours, Dylan. It is time to give away our last trip of the night, Josh. Don't rush me, bro. <laughs> Before we wrap up, though, one last thing. want to make sure we give a shout-out to Yamaha. Thank you, Yamaha, for sending us uh, our brand new Yamaha 425s. A brand new pair of Yamaha 425s are in the mail for the Flying Hub 2. The Flying Hub 2 is getting a fresh set of 425 motors every year with a brand new operating system, wire harnesses, the top of the top notch for the Flying Hub 2 every year from Yamaha Corporate because we are their guinea pigs putting their newest, latest, greatest technology to the test, beating it up, breaking it in, and testing it out on the water, and you guys are getting it bloody. Just like Estelle's Bronco, no better way to break in a new vehicle or new motor besides beating it up and getting it bloody. So uh, thank you, Yamaha. Appreciate your uh, help and partnership in that. Bass Pro Shops, appreciate you guys for letting us do our seminars, which hopefully will be resuming again shortly. Salt Strong, appreciate all you guys do, being local and family-owned and operated and just so great for our fishery. Salinity, shout out to you guys, salinitygear.com, for working with us, making us all these great uh, new products in our shop. All the new bumper stickers are all Salinity Gear products. So definitely check out those new products and giving us some free stickers for giveaways and angle coolers. Mike Dixon, even though I don't like you. No, I'm just kidding. I love Mike Dixon and Ingle Coolers. Uh, definitely a great, great partner there with Ingle Coolers. Super involved in the fishery, fighting for you, just like Yamaha. Ingle Coolers and Yamaha, super involved in fighting for recreational fishermen across the Gulf of Mexico. Bass Pro as well, Johnny Morris. Great guys and Salt Strong giving me a channel opportunity voice to carry out that message too. So appreciate everybody for being sponsors, supporters, groups, everything. Speaking of supporters, our supporter shirts are here. Make sure you pick them up. 
Also, uh, we've got eight new Yamaha motors in the mail uh, that we purchased because we're going fully back to Yamaha across our entire fleet. Let me tell you, we've had Mercury, we've had Suzuki, we've had Honda. Nothing beats a Yamaha outboard engine. And that is not anything other than just pure trial and error. Buy one, try it out. We've literally tried everything between our dolphin boat, ferry boats, uh, sunset cruise boats, our charter boats, our That's fishing it. boats, the flying hub too. Nothing takes a beating and keeps, keeps on ticking. Nothing has better all-around support and more readily available parts than a Yamaha engine. Give the guys at Central Marine, Pro Marine a call. Uh, Sam Warner, if your motor's out of warranty, Warner Performance Marine, great, great guys over there. Definitely go Yamaha. If you want to never find parts, buy a Honda. If you want to work with Precision Marine, which are great guys, really making it easy for Suzuki. Uh, Mercury, there's a few really good local places, but Mercury are not everyday commercial beat them up ride them hard motors great for high performance kind of more recreational use if you have a very light boat if you need power you need reliability you need everyday use go yamaha we've done the trial and error we've done it for you we spent a lot of money doing it go yamaha trust me <laughs> yeah, i think the flying Sam Warner is the best. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, if your motor's out of warranty or if you're broke down and you got a charter the next day, Sam Warner will get you out of a tough spot. Yeah, he's the man. Warner Performance Marine, local, family-owned and operated. Great dude. What were you saying, Josh? Didn't mean to cut you off. I just Actually, remember I going out to the Florida Flying Hub 2 every time the motors got changed and it was always a different brand, but Yamaha seems to be right there. We started with Yamaha and went away from it uh, in a mistake because we were having a little bit of trouble and getting a little bit of frustration, but we went to Suzuki, we went to Mercury, we went to Honda. The frustrations only got worse, let me tell you. Motors break down, things happen. You're going to be in the best hands of Yamaha, let me tell you. Uh, Mike McKenna, I realize that, but I am just passionate about the fact that I'm, we've done the trial and error. I'm not paid. I'm not anything. I have to pay for the motors just like you. I just get ahead of the line and, uh, don't have quite the weight to, to get these things. Uh, and I, I have some good friends that work for it because just the long history of working with these guys, I don't have some crazy things where we're getting free stuff all the time. I had to pay for the shirt, <laughs> but it's worth it. Uh, let me tell you. All right, so we're going to give away our free 39-hour trip. If you're a supporter, don't forget to join us for the supporters after show. If you're not a supporter, become a supporter today because you get exclusive content, private access to the supporters group. You get the after show. You get advanced news. You get a bunch of cool stuff. Join the supporters page. It's really, really cool. Appreciate everybody who sent stars tonight. Really, really appreciate you supporters. Shout out to all our regulars club members. And hopefully we see you all again soon inside Fish Famous John's Pass at Hubbard's Marina. And hopefully we'll see you next week for another episode of the live stream show every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. Join us for the Real Animals radio show, News Radio 970 WFLA. Every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on, again, News Radio 970 WFLA on the iHeartMedia Network. Josh, roll that beautiful bean footage. Let's see who won that free 39-hour trip. And then I'm going to go to the bathroom, pour another drink, and we're going to start the supporters page after show. So supporters after show starts at approximately 10 p.m. John Greska from Palm Harbor just won himself a 39-hour fishing trip for one lucky guest. John Greska, haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Hope to see you again soon, especially with a free 39-hour trip. Hopefully, we'll see the rest of you guys next week for another episode. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Y'all.